This is the Hasidic Story Project with Barack Holman, podcasting from Jerusalem, Israel. This podcast is sponsored by listeners just like you. To become a supporter of this podcast, please go to HasidicStory.com. H-A-S-I-D-I-C Story.com. You'll never know. 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 Reb Asher was the newly minted son-in-law of Reb Naftali of Rupshitz a very close chassid of the seer of Lublin. And Reb Asher was told that his father-in-law was a great tzaddik, a big rebbe, and that this was a very holy family. So after the wedding was over and the Sheva Brachot were over, he was very excited to see how things worked in the court of Reb Naftali of Rapshitz. On the first morning, he's davening Shachrit, standing next to his father-in-law. The shul is filled with the chassidim. And all of a sudden, Reb Naftali turns around to the chassid behind him, and he shouts at him, You call that davening? That's not davening. The chassid is shocked. He puts his talus over his head. He even starts to cry a little bit. And Reb Asher is thinking to himself, Oy vey, does my father-in-law have any idea how he embarrassed this Jew? After davening, there's a group of chassidim that would sit together and learn with the Rebbe. And they're learning very advanced Gemara. One of the chassidim asks a question, and the Rebbe shouts back at him, Why don't you think before you ask a question? How can you ask a question like that? And Reb Asher's thinking to himself, Oy vey, what kind of way is that for you to talk with one of your chassidim who's learning with you? They're leaving the shul, and this chassid comes over and he says, Rebbe, please, I need to ask something from you. And here's a little bit of tzedaka. And the Rebbe looks at the tzedaka and he says, You call this tzedaka? This is not tzedaka. And he gives the money back to this chassid. The chassid is in shanky, doesn't even know what to say. And in the meantime, the Rebbe is out of the shul. Reb Asher follows the Rebbe, his father-in-law, and he sees there's a wagon stuck in the mud with lots of merchandise on the back. The wagon driver, he shouts out to the Rebbe and Reb Asher, he says, Hey, guys, come here and help me get this out of the mud. I'm stuck in the mud. And Reb Naftali says to Reb Asher, Let's go. Let's push the wagon out of the mud. And Reb Asher is thinking to himself, This is not a respectable thing for the Rebbe to do. How can the Rebbe get in the mud here? But the Rebbe gets right into the mud and he shouts at Asher, Asher, get over here and help me! When Reb Asher comes, and the two of them, they push the wagon out of the mud. The Rebbe's full of mud. Reb Asher's full of mud. But the Rebbe doesn't seem to care. He starts heading to his room. And as he gets there, there's a chassid sitting in the hallway on a chair. And the Rebbe says to him, Stand up for a Rebbe! And the chassid says to the Rebbe, Rebbe, I can't stand up. I'm too sick. I don't have the strength. He said, What are you talking about? Stand up and show some respect for a Rebbe! But I can't, Rebbe. Well, if you can't show me respect... Then just get out of here. I can't help you. Oy vey, Reb Asher's thinking to himself, this is the family that I married into. I thought he was a great sati, can a great Rebbe. He's like a monster. The Rebbe's in his room for about an hour, and then he bursts out the door, and he runs to the communal kitchen. There's a bunch of women there cooking food for the yeshiva, and for all of the people that were involved in the institution where the Rebbe was. And he comes into the kitchen and he says, Don't I deserve some milk? I've worked so hard today. Give me a good glass of milk. And Reb Asher thinks to himself, What kind of Rebbe is this that he cares about the physical world? He's supposed to be beyond that. The Rebbe's so spiritual, but here, he craves some milk and he comes and shouts at the ladies, Give me some milk. What's going on here? He really doesn't understand. And just then this woman comes in and she says, Rebbe, please, you have to help me. I gave birth to twins and I'm breastfeeding them, but I don't have enough milk to feed them both. Rebbe, please give me a bracha that I'll have enough milk. And the Rebbe looks at this woman and says, Go home. Everything will be fine. Reb Asher thinks, okay, this is really too much, you know. What kind of bracha is that for this woman? And the whole day, all these crazy things. He wants to tell his father-in-law, but one thing leads to another. And before he knew it, the day was over. And then the next day, and a couple days passed. And the Rebbe runs back into the kitchen. And he says, that milk you gave me, it was weak. What did you water it down? I need full milk, not that stuff you gave me the other day. And Reb Asher says, ah, right. I gotta remind the Rebbe. This behavior is not acceptable. And just like that, the woman comes back in. She says, Rebbe, please, you gave me a bracha that I should be able to breastfeed my children. And I can. But the milk that's coming out, it's like watered down milk. It's not good. It's not full milk. I need really good full milk that's going to come out. And the Rebbe says, don't worry. Everything's fine. Go home. You'll see everything will be fine. So Reb Asher says to himself, wait a minute. This woman came a few days for a bracha, and I thought my father-in-law just wanted a glass of milk. But it turned out that he was giving this woman a bracha 
before she even came. And here he comes back and he says, the milk you gave me, it's like watered down. It's weak milk. And then this woman says the same thing. And he says, go home, you'll be fine. So Rebasha says to himself, okay, I got to find out what's going on here. In the morning, after davening, he goes to the guy that the Rebbe yelled at. He says, tell me, what happened after the Rebbe yelled at you? He said, it's the craziest thing. For months, I've been davening for my son to have a refuash nema. He's been sick for him to recover. And I've been davening and davening. The Rebbe yelled at me, you call that davening? And I said to myself, right, I'm not really davening from the deepest place in my heart. And the Rebbe made me cry. And the Rebbe pulled out davening from me like I've never davened in my life. And when I came home, my son was healed. So Rabasha goes to the guy who learns every morning with the Rebbe. And he says to him, what happened after the Rebbe yelled at you? That you should think before you ask a question. The guy said, you won't believe this, Rabasha. Every time I look at a page of Torah... I see new insights that I've never seen before. I don't know what happened to me. But since the Rebbe has shouted at me, everything has changed. So he finds the guy who came and wanted to give tzedakah, and the Rebbe threw it back at him. He said, this is tzedakah? You call this tzedakah? He said, so what happened with you? He said, a huge bracha came. And this business deal that I wanted to ask a Rebbe for a bracha for, it went through. And he said, and now I can really give tzedakah. So I already went back to the Rebbe, and I gave him a really good donation. Then he finds the wagon driver, and he says, what happened with you? I said, well, for months I was driving around with this merchandise. No one wanted to buy it. And then when you and the Rebbe pushed me out of the mud, this crowd came. And within hours, I sold everything that I'd been trying to sell for months. He went back to the guy who couldn't stand up in the hallway, and the Rebbe said, stand up for a Rebbe. The guy said he was sick. And the guy told Rebasher, the Rebbe healed him. The Rebbe yelling at him healed him. So now he could finally stand up and show the Rebbe the respect he deserves. So now Reb Asher understood what happened with the woman in the milk and all of these people that it seemed like the Rebbe was yelling at. It wasn't that he was yelling at them. He needed to hide the way he was bringing the Shefa, the abundance and the blessings into the world. And not only did he hide it, he also did it in a way where he knew in advance exactly what every person who approached him needed. And after that, Reb Asher realized what he thought was holy wasn't close to where his holy father-in-law held. And from that point on, he never had another negative thought about his father-in-law and never mentioned any of this to him. a supporter of this podcast, please go to HasidicStory.com. H-A-S-I-D-I-C-Story.com.